Hello guys, welcome to ifactner.com technical video tutorials. In today's video tutorial, we are going to learn about the difference between static websites and the dynamic websites. So let's start. First, let's see what do we mean by static websites. Static websites are those kinds of websites which only provide static information to the viewer. Viewers cannot interact with the website. That is, they cannot uh, log in or they cannot comment or they cannot do other kinds of things with the websites. So they only consume information from the website. It's a one-sided communication that is from the website towards the user. And if you want to develop a static website, then we just need to know about three things. That is HTML5, Hypertext Markup Language, which is the language of the web. Then we should have the knowledge of cascading style sheets to uh, do the look and feel of our website. And then if uh, we want uh, to just uh, uh, make uh, some little dynamic things at the client side, then we should be able to uh, do some programming in JavaScript. So now let's see what uh, are the dynamic websites. Dynamic websites are those websites with which the users can interact. For example, a user can log into the system. They can check uh, their comments. They can comment on different topics or they can check their emails or stuff like that. Or uh, if we want to do a shop, we want to do shopping online, then we need to go to the dynamic websites. So dynamic website is a two-way communication. User gives some kind of input, it goes to the server, the server processes it and uh, gives a, uh, us the output. For example, if I just uh, want to log in into a system, then I will type my login and password. That login and password is taken by the server side scripting language that is uh, PHP, ASP.NET, JSP or Cold Fusion, and it takes that uh, login and password to the server. And then at the server side, it communicates with the database using the standard query language. And the database checks if our login and password matches. If the login and password matches, then the information is sent back to the page uh, to the user and he, he or she is redirected to the login page. And if the information is not correct, then they will get a message. So now not only the client side, but also the server side is included. And we are, have also included the databases. And this is an example of a dynamic website. So the user can interact with the website. They can do shopping. They can comment on the website and uh, stuff like that. An example of a dynamic website is this YouTube system. So we can do a lot of things in this system. But if you only watch it uh, to watch my tutorial and do not communicate with me or do not communicate or log in into the system, then you are just using it for the one-way communication, that is for the static purposes. So you can use the dynamic websites for the static purposes, but you can't use the static website for the dynamic purposes. To develop a dynamic website, we need to have the knowledge of HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript for the user interface. And then uh, we 
need to have a knowledge of one server-side scripting language. We can use PHP, that is an open source uh, scripting language, or we can use ASP.NET, uh, Java Server Pages, or Cold Fusion. And then we need to have some kind of a storage space at the server. For that, we can use a database, for example, Microsoft uh, SQL Server, Access, or Oracle, or whichever database you want to use at the backend, you can use it. It depends upon your hosting plan. And uh, then we need to have the knowledge of SQL Server to develop dynamic websites. And other way to develop a dynamic website is to use the pre-built systems, for example, like WordPress, and just include the modules for look and feel and for the functionality as well. And then we are ready to go. Now let's see what are the benefits and disadvantages of a static website. The main advantage of the static website is its size because uh, we just need to code in HTML and therefore uh, its uh, size is very limited. It's easier to develop and if we use the include files to include the CSS files, to include the JavaScript files and uh, uh, stuff like that, then it is relatively easier to maintain because usually on static websites, the information is not changed dynamically and at the faster pace. And we can use different keywords and descriptions in different pages. Uh, thus, it enables us uh, for the higher ranking in the uh, search engines, in some search engines. But the main disadvantages of static websites are on its one-way communication nature. User can't interact with the website. They just consume the information and the functionality is limited because we can just post the information and user can read the information. That's it. Static websites are easier to host and are relatively cheaper to host because usually we don't uh, need a lot of space and databases, uh, rent the databases and stuff like that. Now, let's see what are the benefits of the dynamic website and what are its disadvantages. The main disadvantage uh, is that uh, usually dynamic websites are heavier. They consume a lot of data. It all depends upon the programming, but they usually consume more data than the static website. And uh, the advantages are we can develop interactive websites. We can interact with our users. It gives us freedom to do, do things whatever we like to do. But if we are using a system like uh, uh, WordPress, then we are dependent on the modules that have been developed by the other developers and the functionality is limited. In some cases, we can get uh, our hands on the code and uh, we can uh, change it to our own purposes. But in other cases, we just have to use the system within the boundaries. So that are the main disadvantages of using the uh, dynamic website systems. So guys and girls, thank you very much for joining me. I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and visit ifactner.com. I would appreciate if you share this tutorial with your friends and family on social media websites. I will see you in the next tutorial. Until then, take care. Good day.